Hey everyone, in today's tutorial, we're going to look at how to create this animated pie chart in DaVinci Resolve. So we are staying on the Fusion page here, and the first thing we're going to do is to bring a background node, and then we're going to change the color of this background node here real quick. And then uh, we are going to bring an ellipse masking node and then connect that to the background node. So we are going to come to the width setting here, right click, and in the menu, let's select expression. So now what we're gonna do is to drag and drop that little plus sign on top of the height setting here. So this will make it equal to the height setting. And then anytime that we adjust the height setting here, the width setting will also adjust accordingly. All right, guys, so next thing we're gonna do is to create our first slice of the pie. And to do that, we're going to uncheck the solid option here. And uh, we are going to just uh, bring up the border width a little bit here. Uh, so this is good enough. Uh, and then we are going to use basically the length setting here to uh, you know, create uh, how big we want that slice to be. But there are a couple problems right now, as you can see. The first is the fact that we need to change the cap style to uh, linear, to straight instead of rounded. So this looks much better. And the second problem is the fact that there is a visible gap between the center of the slice and the rest of it. So to fix that, we are going to right click the height setting and then in the menu, choose expression uh, once again. And then we're going to drag and drop height on top of border width. So now uh, everything is connected to border width and we have a perfectly shaped slice of a pie. And as we adjust border width, as you can see, everything else will adjust accordingly. And we can also use uh, the length setting here to help us determine how big we want this slice to be. Uh, so for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to leave length at a 0.4. So let's just go ahead and type that in. And now we're ready to move on to the next slice of the pie. So to do that, we are going to just bring in a background note and we're going to connect the other one to this one as a uh, foreground. And uh, we are going to first of all change the color uh, of this background node. And then let's uh, copy and paste instance this ellipse masking node. This will just ensure that all the settings are connected uh, to each other. And then uh, we are going to uh, de-instance position and length by right-clicking on them. And then in the menu, selecting de-instance, this will just make sure that these two settings are independent of the other. Now the question becomes, oh, okay, so where do we want this um, you know, second slice to be exactly so that it's perfectly sitting or positioned right next to the first one? So the answer to this is actually we need to come to but uh, we'll go back to the previous one, add up length and position, and that's 0 0.4. So let's type that in. And then as you can see, this will make sure that it's situated perfectly next to the first slice. All right, now we can play with the length setting here as well, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to leave it also at 0 0.4. So now actually you have a perfectly shaped Pac-Man. All right, so we're ready to move on to the third slice of the pie. Let's bring a background node once again, and then we're going to connect this merge node to this background as a foreground. And then we're going to once again, first of all, change the color of this background to something different. And then we are going to just copy and paste instance uh, ellipse masking node here. Uh, and uh, once again, we are going to make sure that uh, let's de-instance the position and length setting. And so that they can be independent of uh, the others. And now the question is, okay, so what does position need to be? So like we said before, let's go back to the previous uh, ellipse masking node and we're gonna add up position and length. So that will be 0 0.8. So let's type that in under position and this will make sure that it's uh, perfectly connected to the second one. But in terms of the size, as you can see, it's way too big, right? So how do we determine the length here? So to do that is literally just math. So it's gonna be one minus, and let's go back to the first ellipse masking node here, 0 0.4, and then let's go to the second one, 0 0.4 uh, for length. So one minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4, that leaves us uh, with 0 0.2. So now, as you can see, we have a perfectly shaped third slice of the pie. Okay, so now let's talk animation. So we are gonna go to the first ellipse masking node here. Let's uh, keyframe the length setting. Uh, and then we're going to move over about 24 frames, which is one second in my example here. Uh, and then uh, let's keyframe again. Let's go back to the first one. Just bring the length setting down to zero. 
Okay, so now let's bring up the spline editor. We're going to change the easing, ease out here for the length setting here. Uh, so uh, let's just bring up these two keyframes. Let's bring up the easing, ease out option. I'm going to just primarily change the easing here. So I think that's good enough. Uh, and then uh, let's just close the spline editor. And now we're gonna go to uh, the second one here. So this time around, we're going to keyframe length and position. So let's do it for, uh, for both. And then we're gonna move over about 24 frames and then we're going to just a keyframe again. So now let's go back to the first one. And here we're just going to bring both setting here down to zero. So that looks good. Now let's uh, bring up the spline editor. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, select all the keyframes. We're going to just adjust the easing setting primarily here for both. So once that's done, let's now move on to the third one here. And we're going to keyframe once again, position and length. Let's move over 24 frames and then we're going to just keyframe again. And then let's go back and then uh, change them, both of them uh, to zero. And then let's bring up the spline editor, change the easing here primarily uh, for both settings. So that looks good enough. If we were to have a look right now, guys, you will see that we have our uh, nice little animation going on. But personally, I am not too happy with this. So one thing I will do is to bring up the keyframe editor here. And then uh, we are going to just uh, come here and then right click in the menu, let's select animated. So this will only give us all the animated settings here or nodes with animated settings. Let's just zoom in a bit here. We are going to uh, adjust or select this second one here. I'm just going to stagger them by just pushing them over by about two frames. Now let's go to the third one here. Once again, just move both position and length over by about another two frames. So four frames and then let's close it. Have a look. You will see that now this animation is looking way much better than the other one. But hey, different folks, different strokes. Okay, now let's talk about how we can make each individual slice stand out. So to do that, we're going to attach a transform node to this first background node here. And then we're going to do this again for the second uh, background node. Uh, let's bring a uh, transform node. Okay, so this looks good. And then we're going to just go back to the first one here. And then let's, let's keyframe the size setting. And then we're going to just move over a few frames. And then we're going to just bring this size setting up a little bit. And now, as you can see, this first slice of the pie is really kind of popping now compared to the rest of the uh, the rest of the pie. And now the key thing here, guys, is to make sure that the pivot point is the same as the rest of the pie. This will allow it to uh, work properly. OK, so now let's come to the second transform node here. We're going to once again keyframe the size setting and then let's move over a few more frames. And then we're just going to bring the size up, but not bigger than the first one purely for aesthetic reasons, but uh, this looks good. And if we look at this animation right now, you will see that this will allow you to kind of uh, emphasize a particular slice of the pie, uh, you know, to get a point across. OK, so this looks good. Now we're going to start to add a shadow. OK, so we're going to use a drop shadow node here. And personally, I like this uh, much better compared to the others. And what we can do is to adjust the drop angle first so that it's facing the right direction. And then we're going to just bring down the drop distance there, bring up shadow strength a little bit. So this looks perfect uh, to me. And then we're going to do the same for the second background node here. We're just going to copy and paste this drop shadow node and then connect it to this second transform node here. Just adjust the drop angle as well as the strength. And this looks good enough. And if we have a look at this entire animation here, guys, we not only have the pie chart animation, but animation for the individual slices with the drop shadow added. So this looks pretty good. So the one other thing we can do here is to layer on the percentages and let's bring a text node and connect it to the merge node as a foreground. So now let's just write our percentages, 40%, uh, 40%, 40% and 20%. OK, so let's just bring down the sizes first of all, and then we are going to right click the text box and then in the menu, select character level styling. OK, so now let's go to the modifiers tab. We are going to just select each one of these individual percentages and move them to their corresponding position on the pie chart. And then once that is done, now let's uh, bring in the multi poly mask node here and then connected this to the text node. Over here, we're going to uncheck invert first, uh, check invert first of all, and then create a mask around one of these percentages. 
And then let's uh, just uncheck invert, and then we're going to right cl uh, click the multi polygon here, uh, and then select duplicate. And then let's move this duplicate over one of these other percentages here. And then let's just duplicate this one more time, and then let's move this over the last percentage. And then once this is done, guys, uh, as you can see, we have created three masks around these percentages. Now let's go to the text node, go to layout, and then we're going to just to start to bring these percentages away from the mask. Let's set a keyframe, move over a few more uh, keyframes, and then let's just bring them back into the mask. So now if we have a look at this animation, you guys will see that not only do we have the pie chart animation, but also we have the percentage animation here as well. But there is a small problem. And then to fix that, let's just go to this center uh, setting here. It's just a fix this quickly but bring it uh, back into these percentages into the mask okay so this looks pretty good uh we should be okay um and but uh yeah this is pretty much it as far as the animation goes all right now the icing on the cake no pun intended in this case is that we can also create callouts so to do that we are going to bring a background node connect this to the merge node as a foreground and then we are going to just change the color first of all and then uh, let's go ahead and bring a multi poly node here connect this to the background node and then we're going to just go ahead and draw out a sort of that call out line here uh, on the screen and then let's just bring up a border width uh, and a little bit there and then you're going to see this line and uh, yeah this is like perfect for if let's say you want to write something here uh, for this particular part of the pie and then uh, we can just add another poly and pretty much do the same thing for the other slices if this is something that uh, you know you want to do but uh, yeah, guys, this is pretty much it uh, as far as this tutorial goes. As you can see, there's a lot you can do with just this uh, animated pie chart. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, I will see you next time.